Hey guys, and welcome back to this Fretted Friday. And in today's episode, a request from you guys. And we're gonna do a full setup on this new Harley Benton TE20 MNCA that I've been sent by the guys from Harley Benton. Coming right up. On the Tone Test, Tone Tuesday this week, I had Red Rover, the FN Game Cat, ask me if I would see if I could get the action any lower on this uh, TE20. And of course, when you guys ask for something, I do my very best to give it to you. Also, I had James Albert say to me, yes, it'd be great to do a setup and show how good a decent value guitar can get. So that's exactly what we're gonna do with this TE20 today. We're gonna do a full setup. We're gonna use the Ron Thorne approach, which I'm gonna add to today just a little because he uses TRAIN as the acronym to remember how to do a setup. I'm gonna add two letters to the end of that to make it trainer. And I'll explain why when we get there. So the very first thing that you're gonna need is a tuner, and you're also gonna need the Allen wrenches and kit that came with your guitar. And these were sent by the lovely folks from Harley Benton. So the first thing we're gonna do, the T, is we're going to tune it up. And I'm using my Peterson Strober Stomp tuner here because it is incredibly accurate. So let's get her tuned up. And it's important to tune and important to tune to whatever tuning you regularly use, which is not often said because tuning puts the correct tension on the strings. So if you down tune, you'll have less tension on your strings. And so your neck will not be pulled forward quite so much. So it's important you tune to your tuning. Okay. I always tune with the neck pickup and with the tone rolled right off, it seems to work best. Always that pesky G string. Okay, now once we are tuned up, in, and in this case I'm using standard tuning, then the next thing to do is the R of train, and that is to check the relief or the rod. Now I have a very simple way of doing this. Most people will tell you either to check at the ninth fret without fretting out or to put a feeler gauge under when you have got a capo on the guitar and put a feeler gauge under the seventh fret. And most guitar brands will give you a measurement that they consider to be correct. And Fender on the Telecaster, which this is a copy of, will give you a measurement. And the, you can check that with feeler gauge, but after such a long time and so many guitar setups, I've got very used to checking the action in a, in, in a very different way, or the relief in a very different way, I should say. And that is by fretting out the first and last, you can feel under the seventh if it moves, but what better way than seeing if it rings? So let me show you what I mean. I've got the first and last fret fretted out and I just pluck the string or tap it and hopefully you can hear there that that's ringing out and I do that on the low E and on the first on the high, high E string. You can do it at both ends, really only need to do it at one end and you can also test at that seventh fret. Now I know absolutely that the relief on this neck is spot on, however, if yours isn't, then you need to work out which way, because most um, guitars these days, including this one, have a two-way truss rod, which means that the truss rod, which runs through the neck, can adjust the neck forwards or backwards. Now, the truss rods were originally set into the necks to counteract the pull of the strings. So in general, the strings, when they're tightened, will pull the neck forwards, creating a a bow this way in the neck. So the truss rods, one-way truss rods, are designed to pull that neck back to flatten it out so that you've just got enough relief in the middle there in accordance with the, uh, with the manufacturer's instructions. The rule of thumb is if you tighten to the right, you tighten the truss rod. If you push it to the left, i.e. counterclockwise, you loosen the truss rod. And the important thing with truss rod adjustment is that you don't go too far. Usually an eighth or a quarter of a turn at a time will let you know, or should 
create a result and let you know if the, the adjustment is correct. As I say, we don't need to adjust this, so I'm not going to. I'm going to remove that Allen key. And what we are going to do today, though, is we're going to reduce the action on this guitar because it is quite high. Now, it's important when adjusting the action to note that on a Telecaster like this, you've got double saddles. So each saddle works with two strings, which means that the intonation is a bit of a dog <laughs> to set. And actually, I much prefer saddles where there's individual saddles for each string so that you can adjust it, particularly on the third and fourth string, because they are quite differently set up. As you will see on this Strat guitar here, it's not as extenuated as it is on some, but generally the fourth and uh, third string are staggered quite a lot more. So it's much better if you can have multiple um, saddles. Anyway, looking at this, the important thing to try to do when you set up your saddles is to get, or when you set up your action, is to get the saddle heights so that they make the same radius as the neck of the guitar. So that's why we look down the neck pretty much the only real time. If people think they can look at action, looking down the neck, while well, they've got better eyes than I have. You can tell if the neck's straight or not by looking down it, and you can also tell if the strings uh, and the bridge is offset. But everything else you need to test by feel. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to give this a little bit of a lower, and while I'm lowering it with the supplied Allen wrench, I'm going to just check that I'm not getting any buzz. And so what I generally do is come up to the 12th fret and just do tapping as I'm lowering. So that's what I'm going to do. And again, counterclockwise loosens the, these hex bolts and thus lowers the action. Which incidentally is the third of Ron Thorne's guide the action. So once you've done the tuning and you've done the the rod and relief, then you get the action lowered and that's what we're doing at the moment. And again, I'm just going to ch check all the way up the fretboard. And we've got no buzz and I've lowered that quite significantly now. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see that low E string, but that is sitting quite a lot lower to the body. And in fact, you can see on the saddle just how much I have re lowered that action. Also, it's worth noting that when you lower your action, the next adjustment I'm going to do after I've done all of the strings is to lower the pickups because they are now a lot higher and closer to the strings, which may cause them to be overdriven. So I'm just going to take that down just a trifle more. And now I'm going to work on the rest of the strings. I will add at this point, I've done all the strings down to the low E. And what I tend to do with the low E is I take it down until it buzzes if I want to get the action as low as possible while I've got it laying horizontal on my lap, I take it right the way down until the 12th fret buzzes. There we go, we've got a bit of buzz now. And then just wind it back a touch till it doesn't buzz. Do the same with the A string as well. Okay, next thing we want to set is the intonation. That's the eye of train. Once more, it's really important that at each stage that we go back to the tuner and tune up the guitar to back to our own preferred pitch. As you can see, this has gone down over a whole tone because I've taken so much tension out by lowering that saddle. 
So there we go, back to concert pitch. Now the action has gone down to, well, probably under a millimeter. Uh, and let me show you that really an awful lot lower. I'm not even sure I can show you the action on that now. It's very, very much lower than when we started. And you can see that all the saddles have got some of these little Allen screw tops showing where we have lowered this action. So now we've got the action right, we need to get the intonation done next. And on a tele guitar, and I'll show you on this one, you've only got three intonation adjusting screws and they tend to be on the back of the bridge here. And these allow the bridge saddles to be moved forwards or backwards. Now, how do we know what our intonation is? Well, very simply, again, we use our tuner don't know why I keep on unplugging it other than to save battery. And what we do is we play a harmonic on the 12th fret, or we can play an open string. And then we also play the 12th fret because the 12th fret should be exactly halfway between the nut and the bridge saddle. And if it's not, if it's slightly one way or the other, then that means that our bridge saddle needs to be moved one way or the other. So, the longer the length, the lower the note. So if I'm playing an open string and I've got it nearly perfectly tuned to an E, and then I play the octave and my tuner's sharp, it means that this length from here to here is shorter than this length from here to the nut. So I need to create a bit more distance between this 12th fret and the saddle. For this, I'm going to need the additional tool, a screwdriver. So once again, just checking this note. Let's get it properly in tune. And it's important not to fret out too hard because you can push a string sharp by fretting it too hard. So I know that that is a little bit sharp, so I need to move the string just a little bit away from the, the 12th fret. Now, obviously that means I need to tighten this screw so that the screw thread pulls through and bites a little more. So that will be righty tighty. And I'm just gonna give this a few good turns because intonation is not all that a fine when it comes to the adjustment. So I've probably turned that screw at least two turns now, and then I'll tune back up. And check that E. Yep, still needs plenty more turning. So I'm going to give it a few, a couple more turns. Right, I think that's probably another, at least another two turns. And you can't go too far wrong with intonation, so don't worry about the adjustment. With the truss rod, you've got to be very careful, only to do very small amounts of adjustment. Whereas with the intonation, it really doesn't matter because you can always put it back and you're not likely to strip the rod. We're getting there. We're still about halfway off so again a nice tighten one two this saddle has gone quite a long way back so now let's see you'll notice that it does detune the string because you're moving that saddle so the whole length it's got longer, so goes flat.
we are very, very close. Now I'm checking the A string at the same time with this because this is a double saddle. So if I get the E string perfect, it's no good if the A then is in the wrong place. So I'm going to get it halfway between the two so that hopefully one is slightly sharp and one is very slightly flat. And to be fair, in the micro tolerances of micro tonality, it really doesn't matter too much. Spot on nearly for the E, and the A is going backwards a little bit faster than the E is going forwards. Let's just make sure they're both static. Absolutely perfect. That's as close as I can get it. So if I can show you on the tuner, let me see if I can make this work. That would be great if I can. Oh, look at that. So open string E is static. Open string A is static. When I fret out the E, it's going slightly sharp and the A is going slightly flat at about the same speed. So that means that we've got that saddle that bridge saddle, in fact, I'd better leave that on and do the others. We've got that bridge saddle just right between those two, but it should make the intonation spot on. So I'm gonna go and do the remaining strings and then we'll talk about the next step. Okay, that's all done. And I'm gonna give you a little demonstration now. Let's have a look. So we've got the E and fretted, the A and fretted, the D and fretted, the bit G, sorry, and fretted, the B and fretted, and the E and fretted at the 12th. And that tells us that our intonation is absolutely spot on. Now, the reason the next thing is noodle N in train is because it's really good to check out the neck and find out if there's any issues with anything that feels wrong because really neck relief and action are very much a personal thing now i've lowered this way below where i like my action normally but i wanted to do it to show you guys that it can be done on a cheap guitar like this now the reason that we do the intonation after the action is because the action of lowering or raising the saddles moves that saddle on an arc and causes it to go further away or closer to the 12th fret. So that's why we do intonation last and then noodle. Now I'm gonna add two more things in and the next one is E, so trainer, E for ear. Because the other thing you want to look out for is how does it sound? Is it nice and resonant? Is it in tune all the way up the neck? And also, are there any high frets? I normally just go all the way up. Just to check if there are any high frets. And if there are any high frets, when you fret a fret, it will actually either buzz on the fret above it, or more than one above it, or it will actually trigger the wrong note because you're actually pushing down and say I'm pushing on the fifth it might actually fret out the seventh so we know that the seventh would be a high fret in that situation you do need to do either a fret level or um, the neck needs to have a, a little bit more of a look at but usually it would be leveling the frets and also then recrowning them you might get away with just the crowning but that's a completely different video which I'll do some other time so yeah train tune relief action intonation noodle ear listen for how it sounds and then the r of trainer is repeat because this is a process and while we've changed lots and lots of bits and pieces on the guitar in terms of the setup every one of those things affects every other one of those things when you think about it the relief is the tension the strings put on the neck if we are changing the distance the saddles are from the neck 
it's going to change that tension. And that's why it's important we keep going back to our standard tuning. So again, we might go round again, check the relief now that we've done all the setup. In fact, let me do that laid down as I should. Oh. And we can still hear that ringing out. So we know the relief is still good. The action now is down around a millimeter, which unfretted at the 12th fret, which is a lot lower than I usually have it, but I've done it for you guys. So the action is good. We know that the intonation is good. I've just proved that to you on the camera and it sounds nice. I can't hear any problem with fret bars or with any tuning issues going up and down the neck. So I think we are good to go. So there you go. Trainer, tune, relief or rod, action, intonation, noodle about on it and literally get it working. Ear to see if it sounds right and if there's any buzz or high frets and then repeat if you haven't quite got it right and then you can't go far wrong. One last little tip for you guys is that I would recommend and suggest that you do a setup with an old set of strings and then check it when you change your strings. And I check my, my setup every time I change my strings, although I never attempt to set up a guitar with a brand new set of strings that haven't been played in for a while. But now this guitar is set up and plays absolutely beautifully. It's got a very low action, which means you've got to use way less force to fret out. So there you go. You have to take it from me that this action is a lot lower, although hopefully you can see it. <laughs> really tricky to show you that because it is such a fine, there we go. That'll show you the action. Um, and hopefully this will allow you to take a relatively cheap and cheerful budget range guitar and do all the work you need to do on it for yourself so that you can get it playing as good as it can play. Have lots of fun doing this guys. Be very careful with your relief and adjusting the truss rod. Micro adjustments will make a big effect and it's very easy to strip that nut that's inside or the two nuts on a double action truss rod. There's a nut at both ends. So hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and a like and it can never hurt to subscribe and then you'll not miss out on any of my future uploads and I'm doing loads of stuff for you. And if there's anything you want to see like Red Rover, the FN Game Cat and James Albert, as, as they asked for this video today, just let me know in the comment section down below or if we're in a live premiere of a video, let me know in there and I will always do my best to bring you guys the content that you really enjoy. I'll be back real soon with the best content I can. In the meantime, as always, have yourselves a great weekend and take good care.